Now, although Congress is out of uh, session right now, they're on their August recess break and getting ready for the upcoming election. As a result, Washington, D.C. is uh, obviously a little bit more quiet than normal. Uh, but there has been absolutely no shortage of news this week. I mean, we have all watched uh, multiple issues that have gone down. In fact, we've had a challenge this week trying to figure out what we, which, which one of these do we talk about. And as Christians, we want to produce within ourselves and to share it with you how to have a biblical worldview about all these news items that are dominating so much of our lives and our thought. Well, earlier this week, for example, we had a major medical association that came out against the transgender ideology. And then this week, we saw the emergence of groups like Christians for Kamala and Evangelicals for Harris. So again, how should Christians think about these stories? Well, joining us now with our weekly worldview segment, biblical worldview segment, is David Clawson. He's the director of FRC's Center for Biblical Worldview. David, always great to have you on the program. And boy, we've got a lot to talk about today. <laughs> Happy Friday. Great to be with you, Jody. Oh, thank you so much. All right. So we've got a lot of stories. I was just kind of bouncing off a couple of them. Uh, uh, so let's, let's hit this first story. I, I think a little bit unexpected, but we did talk about it on Washington Watch this, this week. And that is the American Society of uh, Plastic Surgeons. They broke with the dominant transgender ideology, and uh, they stated that their organization opposes the unscientific consensus that obviously is prevalent in other professional organizations. Uh, what's your response to all of this? Yeah, my response is one of excitement, and I see this as good news. As Christians who, again, Jody, want to come at these issues from a biblical worldview, uh, the biblical worldview could not be more clear that God's intention and design uh, is that we are created either male or female. Uh, there are not two, more than two genders. Uh, this whole transgender ideology uh, that our culture has run with uh, is diametrically opposed to what Scripture teaches. Uh, so when anyone in the culture uh, affirms that truth, Jody, I think that's a good, that's a good day. That, that's good news. And this particular story, this Association of Plastic Surgeons, they do represent 92% of all the board-certified uh, plastic surgeons. And so I think uh, this is uh, exciting. Uh, this is good news. Uh, it, perhaps maybe this is a tipping point. But what is interesting, Jody, uh, is that this, this kind of news that we're seeing uh, the rest of the world is already a little bit of ahead of the United States on this. I'm thinking, you know, just last year, Dr. Hillary uh, Cass's uh, bombshell report came out uh, about how a lot of these uh, procedures that are being done to minor children are harmful and unscientific, and they even shut down that infamous gender clinic in England. And so this is exciting, but it's still worth noting, Jody, the United States is an outlier uh, in the fact that we are so permissive uh, when it comes to puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and even surgeries uh, for minor children. And certainly this is uh, one of those issues you don't want to be an outlier on. You want to be taking the lead. And yeah, I agree with you. I think this is one of those potential domino effects. I mean, look, when it, we all know when it comes to so many of these professional medical associations, almost all of them seem to fall in line with the immoral revolution of the LGBT community. Do you think that uh, these plastic surgeons perhaps could be, as you say, a tipping point, a domino effect? I, I, I think the possibility is there. Do you? I think the possibility is there. Uh, when you look at some of the other professional associations, uh, the two APAs, the American Psychiatric Association, the American Psychological Association, uh, you know, pe people are looking at those groups. Uh, maybe they would fall in line. You know, Jody, I hope so, but I doubt it. Uh, you know, those are organizations that in 1973 uh, completely reversed themselves on uh, the nature of homosexuality. You know, one day this was a disorder that needed treatment, the very next day it wasn't. Uh, and, you know, the, the politicization of so many of these professional associations. And, you know, the truth is, Jody, there's big money involved. Uh, if you can code for your insurance, uh, counseling, and, and other things related to uh, the, these types of issues, 
it's going to be hard to see some of the big professional associations falling in line uh, or following suit, I should say, with the plastic surgeons. I'm hopeful, uh, and especially so, Jody, as the rest of the world, there's not a country in Europe uh, that now advises the so-called transgender surgeries for minor children. Uh, again, the, the consensus is beginning to emerge outside the United States uh, that what we're doing is actually barbaric uh, and unscientific. And so let's continue to follow this and track this. My hope is uh, that the rest of the world will, again, start putting good pressure on the United States to fall in line. But again, Jody, the ideology, the activists are strong. So uh, wait and see, I guess. Yeah, well, we, we certainly will wait and see. But, you know, the plastic surgeons, they're on the tip of the spear of this whole issue. That Having the surgeries is one thing, but following the surgeries, plastic surgery is required. I mean, you got to fix True. a mess, the created, as best you can. So uh, hopefully this uh, significant uh, change will... Produce. We'll see. As you said, we'll keep a, a look on it. If I can't switch gears with you, David, um, I, I, I mentioned in the intro of this uh, segment the uh, e emergence, if you will, of groups like Christians for Kamala or Evangelicals for Harris. I want to play a, a quick clip for you and get your response. If we can, let's hit clip number six, please. We don't have to just pick the one issue that some men in power tell us we have to pick. We get to choose who to vote for based on our own values. And so when I get alone in that voting booth, I'm going to be thinking who best reflects all around all my values as a Christian. Nobody gets to decide that for me. That's solely my decision. And I get to vote based on my values. Okay, let me kind of set this up to you with with the real heart where I want to go with this. I mean, seeing that this has come from Evangelicals for Harris, that's the organization that put this out. I mean, what she just said is true. Uh, yeah, but seeing that it has come from Evangelicals for Harris, the assumption here is that we have to believe that they believe Harris best reflects Christian values. Yeah, that's right. And the, one of the groups also put out an um, uh, ad, a television advertisement, Jody, uh, playing a clip of Billy Graham and then kind of uh, trying to Saw criticize that. President Trump on, on his uh, beliefs and religious commitments. You know, it, it's interesting, Jody, and what the lady said in that clip, it, it's true. All of us, of course, as Americans have that constitutional right that we can vote for whoever we want to according to our convictions and praise God for that right that we enjoy. Uh, but, Jody, I think when it comes to evangelicals for Harris, and this is just, I think, the latest reiteration of what used to be the Biden for evangelicals organization, uh, you know, it goes back to conversations that you and I have been having for weeks now. Again, for Christians, we believe the Bible has spoken. There's a thus saith the Lord on really clear issues. And, and when it comes to issues the Bible speaks to, uh, the Harris Walls campaign, Jody, is on opposite sides of Scripture. The abortion issue, and I've already talked at length in previous uh, you know, interviews on Kamala Harris voting when she was a senator for against uh, providing protections for babies who survived botched abortions. She voted against uh, providing uh, protection for babies who can feel pain uh, in the womb. Uh, Tim Walls, uh, you know, of all the Democrats Kamala Harris could pick in the United States to be her running mate, she chose Tim Walls, the person who signed legislation uh, last year that legalized abortion through all nine months. This is the same governor last year who gave the courts temporary, uh, gave them the right to temporarily take custody of children uh, whose parents won't allow them uh, to go through with, you know, these horrible gender surgeries. And, and so, again, the Bible is actually really clear on those issues, life and sexuality and our bodies. And I just think when Christians go into the voting booth, we need to look at the two candidates. We need to look at the two parties. We need to look at personnel. And ultimately, Jody, what does God's word say on really clear issues? And we need to see where the candidates line up on that and then vote uh, to the best that we can approximate biblical justice. Yeah, and, and so much of the, I mean, we saw, perhaps most of us didn't see it, but we, we saw that uh, it reported at least that these Christians for Harris, Christians for Kamala, whichever group it was, they had a virtual meeting and and in the meeting, I actually used uh, Matthew 25 about loving your neighbor 
and all this sort of stuff really as an excuse to let them do whatever immoral behavior want to do. That's what they interpret love as being, as I uh, perceive. Uh, and so what's your response to this taking and twisting of Scripture, bringing forth some sort of Scripture to use as a theological argument to vote for unbiblical principles? Yeah, and it is right to call it that. It is a theological argument, Jody. Uh, I don't think it's a good theological argument. I don't think it's love of neighbor uh, to slaughter uh, your unborn neighbor in in the womb through all nine months of pregnancy. I don't think it's love of neighbor uh, to support policies uh, to chop off the genitals of healthy minor children. I don't think that's love of neighbor uh, for a whole host of these issues. Uh, And so, of course, I want to be clear, Jody, neither party, neither candidate is perfect. Uh, but the Harris Walls ticket is really now campaigning on issues that are diametrically opposed, opposed to biblical morality. And uh, again, I think that's why those of us who uh, look at God's Word and want to understand God's Word for what it says chafe uh, when we see uh, Scripture misused and uh, distorted like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as we think about this upcoming election, and it is, man, it's getting closer and it seems rapidly just right around the corner. Uh, but we, we received some news this week, and we talked about that there's a couple of other states now that are going to have abortion directly on the ballot. What, what's the latest on, on the effort to put abortion on the ballot? And uh, how are you, how are we uh, encouraging Christians to think about these referendums? Yeah, very briefly, Jody, as of right now, there are eight states where abortion in some way is going to be on the ballot this week. Missouri uh, and Arizona, uh, uh, they were able to certify they had enough signatures to have these abortion amendments. Uh, Don't have time to get into the details of every one of these, Jody, but for some of these states, uh, people are going to have the opportunity to vote. Do they codify abortion uh, in the state constitution? Uh, some of the other, uh, in, in other states, they're going to be voting on whether to uh, allow uh, abortion to be codified in their state constitution through the second trimester. Um, and so the, the states, Jody, are Nevada, Arizona, Colorado, South Dakota, Missouri, Nebraska, Florida, as well as Maryland and New York. Uh, citizens in all of those states will have an opportunity to see a ballot measure. And the, the, the threshold is different in some of those states. In Florida, they need 60% to, to pass an amendment to, to change the Constitution. Other states, it's only 50% plus one. And Jody, the warning is, you know, wherever abortion has been on the ballot since Roe v. Wade is overturned, the pro-abortion side has won. That shows me that a law is inherently pedagogical. And for 50 years, uh, Americans have been told that abortion is morally permissible. That was the logic of the Roe v. Wade decision. And what we're finding uh, is that a lot of people who maybe told us that they were pro-life or even thought they were pro-life have voted the wrong way on a lot of these measures. And so the work of education, uh, the work of uh, coming alongside our friends and neighbors and reminding them what abortion really is uh, and how these ballot measures affect it, uh, that's the work all of us have to do from now until November. Yeah, boy, there's a lot of work to do and a lot of states uh, where that the work needs to be done. Uh, I wish we had more time, David. I, I, I would love to get into the Democrat National Convention that's taking place in Chicago next week, uh, 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 at least a portion. Uh, we don't know how accurate uh, in terms of being a final version, but uh, their proposed party platform was released, and there's a lot of concern there. Uh, Real quickly, maybe 30 seconds or so, do you have an opinion about that, what you've seen so far? Yeah, I was able to review the preliminary draft, and it's a a massive document, 80 pages, Jody. Uh, Two things very quickly, uh, 930 words on abortion. It's the longest uh, statement we've ever seen in a party platform on abortion. And when it comes to LGBT rights, it's a full two pages. Uh, of so-called uh, policy prescriptions. And so a lot to unpack. We'll, I'm sure, get into it later, Jody. Uh, but it is shaping up to be one of the most extreme platforms we've seen in modern American history. Surprise, surprise. And at the same time, the uh, Republicans, as we saw, saw, had problems with their platform as well. On the other side, thank you, David Clawson, director of FRC Center for Biblical Worldview. Always an honor to have you on to discuss this. Thank you, Jody.